Dobar dan, poštovani gledalci i dobrodošli u još jedno druženje koje nosi naziv Pop Quart, koje je već postalo tradicionalno i reće se svake subote u 17 časova. Jeste da je godina 2012. na izmaku, ali to nije neki razlog da naša emisija ne bi i danas išla i se vas obradovala najrazličitim informacijama iz kulture, ne samo iz Crne Gore i regiona Evrope, već i iz čitavog svijeta. Kako ste vi sami navikli, u svakoj emisiji postoji Twitter, Facebook i SMS konverzacije ili debata. Ovoga puta želimo da znamo koja je to vaša omiljena novogodišnja ili pak božićna pjesma. Ukoliko se javljate putem Twittera, nakon vašeg Twitta potrebno je da stavite tarabu ili hashtag nakon koje ćete napisati popquart, a ukoliko se javljate putem Facebooka, bitno je da lajkujete našu stranicu koja se nalazi na adresi facebook.com kosa crta popquart, samo je već status postavljen, stoga osjetite se slobodnim da komentarišete, a ukoliko se javljate putem SMS servisa na broj telefona 14999, pošaljite vaš odgovor. One koji budu najaktivniji će i ovoga puta nova knjiga nagraditi jednim lijepim izdanjem. E sad, nakon što sam ja sve ovo izgovorio, vrijeme je da krenemo sa svim tim interesantnim prilozima koje najavih. Dakle, Svima je jasno da je restauracija umjetnosti, da kažem, jedan od veoma bitnih činilaca generalne umjetnosti, a čini mi se da je ona Ameriku nekako najviše interesovala, da tako kažem, onda kada su se dešavali uragani. Sada ćemo da vidimo kako su umjetnici obnavljali, da tako kažem, svoja dijela koja su nekako stradala prilikom uragana. This is mold. Very concerned. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with this. This is all mold. Right here we put the ones that have the least amount of damage. But there's a lot of damage, as you can see. Well, so they found us this beautiful big open, where old, I guess it's an old warehouse space, which is now being converted over for artistic purposes, industrial city. I'm a professional objects conservator based out of Baltimore, Maryland. And I've been a professional conservator since uh, the late 90s. I'm kind of the point person between the artists and the conservators and um, just kind of any problems that anybody's having, um, you know, registering all the arts, making sure that the schedule is working fine between the conservators, the volunteer conservators that we have here, and the artists whose um, work has been so damaged. So what we're doing is we're setting up places like this, which is just a simple plastic tent, and we're using that as a containment area. So damaged artworks will be brought in, and we put them in there, mostly just to help isolate them from the rest of the environment so we don't cross-contaminate with soiling and mud and mold and whatever. So conservators will be here, and they will assess the artworks as they come in, advising the artists as to what may need to happen. I moved to my studio in Tribeca in 1969. I've been there a long time. On the ground floor is my painting studio and we live on the second floor. On the night of the hurricane about 28 inches of water entered my ground floor studio. Didn't know what to do because I have a lot of paintings. I remember standing on the steps looking at this water that was in the hallway knowing it was in my studio understanding that this is insane Uh, oh my God, it's all going to get wet. I don't know what's going to happen. The AIC, American Institute for Conservation, is our profession, national professional association. After Hurricane Katrina, they saw the need for a kind of a unified response group to respond to artists in need or for institutions, museums, historic homes, whoever was you know, affected. A group of us from across the country were trained in a number of, in a number of sessions and we became the core of this emergency response group. There are groups of us positioned around the country who can go and be kind of first responders and look at museums, galleries, studios to see what kind of damage has occurred and what sort of resources are going to need to be brought in to help those artists and collecting institutions recover from the disaster. The water had gone out so we started to assess the damage and basically we worked very quickly. A lot of my students I teach at the Art Students League, came to help in the dark, carried to the empty third floor of my building about 170 paintings. What I didn't realize was the extent of the damages to the works on paper. 
which are now housed here. There's a whole big series of my works on paper from the early 80s that uh, have a lot of mold. I'm very sorry about that. Really, you can think of this as kind of like a, a, a MASH hospital triage unit in that we're looking at things, we're trying to stabilize things, you know, get pull them back off the brink of total loss, get them stable, and then people can sit back and, you know, calmly, quietly make long-term plans for treatment. We'll probably have an area for cleaning, so we're going to be doing a lot of vacuum cleaning. We may have some wet cleaning areas if we still have things that are wet with mud on them, so we'll have like shallow baths. Plus we'll also have some repacking because obviously once something's clean we want to repack it in, in good stable materials and then that way it can be taken back to the artist's studio or home or wherever. The nice thing is we have so much expansion space here we could end up with a lot of different stations. With the response that we've already gotten when we haven't even had the hotline or haven't had you know this setup, I think it will probably go longer just because I don't think we know exactly how many artists are out there. We already have at least 25 that have contacted us. I think we're probably going to see a lot more people coming in. It's really hard to put into words. I've been a painter um, based on faith. I've been a painter based on luck. I've been a painter who's always followed my heart. And I I've been helped by so many people. And this, the AIC, and it's a godsend. This is fantastic. I mean, I'm very happy that they're here, and I'm very happy that it's here, and I'm very pleased that the people in, from Industrial City are kind enough to do this. E pa ja ću vas podsjetiti da nam se javljate i putem Twittera, i putem Facebooka, i putem SMS čata. Znate da je naša današnja tema koja je to vaša omiljena, božićna ili novogodišnja pjesma. Mi nastavljamo sa vistima iz sfere umjetnosti i dizajna. Znate da smo u prošloj emisiji emitovali prilogu u kojem poznati brašni par kolekcionari Don i Mera Rubel vas savjetuju zapravo kako da kupujete umjetnost ukoliko se odučite na takav potez. A u ovoj emisiji oni su za sve vas otvorili svoju umjetničku riznicu da se tako izrazim i prikazali šta su sve to oni kupili od umjetničkih dijela. Beatrice, Michael, how are you? Somehow, art has been very good to us and we thought the least we could do is give it back. The artists have given us some of their best pieces and we thought it'd be nice to share this with everybody else. Oscar Murillo, he's a young artist, was born in Colombia. He essentially worked his way through art school by cleaning offices. He's an incredibly charismatic character. We saw his work in, a, in an art fair and we arranged to meet him two days later and we walk in into a room and there are six incredible paintings in the room and he had worked for 48 straight hours to make the paintings now i wouldn't have believed that except i had never in my life seen a person who looked more exhausted than he did when we walked into the room and we said have you ever had an ambition to work on a large scale we come back five weeks later and we see these incredible paintings and we said we, we have to show these. It's not a one-way sharing because I think that it comes back. The, the, the richness of thousands of students coming into this space, what it means for a former drug and weapon confiscation center uh, to transform into a museum space, a public venue space, it becomes a very meaningful interaction that really goes both ways. When we came to this building, it just looked ideal. It's kind of this Bauhaus feel to it, this huge structure. From the outside, we didn't realize it was two floors, but it just looked like it had the mass and it had the dimensions. The architecture seemed really brutal enough and right enough to be a, a good building for us. We realized that it had the right column spacing and the right ceiling heights, and the price was right. That, that was essential. One of the disadvantages of having a big space is artists come here, look at the space, and you never know what they're going to come back. This is the work of Thomas Hasego, who is obviously an ambitious sculptor. We met him in California. We saw him in a group show that David Kodansky of Gallery had in California. 
and it, it worked with very powerful. So we went to visit him in the studio so that we, we bought the work and we showed the work. He's a good example of someone that we become committed to. We now probably have 30 or 40 pieces of his and we continue to do this. I think that's more or less our modus operandi because we'll meet an artist, we become involved, we, we have faith in the artist, we'll continue to commit to it. Many of the people who will see this actually know this building because when Miami Vice was uh, being taped and run, this was a drug enforcement agency building and this was always the building that they showed that the bad guys, the money, the drugs, the weapons were brought to. Uh, it's kind of strange because what we've done is we've substituted the original addiction of this building for some <laughs> new addicts. Uh, the difference is they don't lock us up, hopefully. Ja ću vas još jednom pozvati da pišete na dobro poznate adrese i Twittera i Facebooka i SMS čata na broju telefona 14999 i naravno znate da je današnja naša tema koja je to vaša omiljena novogodišnja ili božićna pjesma. Da li je to možda Last Christmas I Gave You My Heart ili su to klasični Jingle Bells ili šta li je već. U suštini vi ćete nam to reći kako rekao putem Facebooka, putem Twittera i putem SMS čata. Dobro znate i poznato vam vam je da je naš studio kompletan, da kažem, u pop art fazonu, kako se i sama emisija zove pop art, negdje možemo protumačiti da ima tributa Andy Warholu, a sve to kažem zbog toga što je to vezano za našu sljedeću priču. Naime, izložba Andy Warhola koja nosi naziv 15 minuta slava i koja polako obilazi svijet, ovoga puta stiže i do kine, ali ona neće biti potpuna. Koji će to Warholovski portret valiti? Pogledajte upravo. Legendarni portreti bivšeg kinoskog diktatora neće biti dio velike retrospektivne izložbe radova Andy'a Warhola u Kini. Zašto? Organizatori nijesu precizno saopštili. Izložba više od 300 Warholovih radova, među njima i 10 portreta u akrilu i sito štampe bivšeg kineskog vođe, kojom se obilježava 25 godina od smrti američkog umjetnika, trenutno je na turneji po Aziji. Ali američki muzej Andy'a Warhola saopštio da slike Mao Tse Tunga neće biti dio postavke u Pekingu i Šangaju sljedeće godine. Iako smo se nadali da će ma ove slike biti među eksponatima jer smo željeli da pokažemo Indijevo zanimanje za kinesku kulturu, jasno nam je da neke stvari još uvijek nisu pogodne za izlaganje u Kini. Kratko su saopštili organizatori. Maovi portreti nastali su početkom 70. godina poslije istorijske posjete američkog predsjednika Richarda Nixona Kini. Andy Warhol, 15 minuta slave, je jedna od najvećih izložbi posvećenih umjetniku poparta. A evo mi imamo i prvo Twitter javljanje na temu koja je vaša omiljena novogodišnja ili božićna pjesma. Filip je napisao DXX Last Christmas. Želimo da čujemo još vaših mišljenja. Pišite i putem Facebooka na stranici facebook.com kosta crta popkvart, a i putem SMS čata na broj telefona 14999. Mi nastavljamo sa pričama iz sfere umjetnosti i dizajna. Evo jedne koje dolazi iz Crne Gore, tačnije sa Cetinja. Tamo je nedavno otvoren salon Petar Lubarda i uručena je nagrada Petar Lubarda koja se dodjeljuje jednom u tri godine crnogorskom umjetniku. Nebitno da li on izlaga u Crnoj gori ili negdje vani. Ono što je bitno jeste da je dijelo za koje dobije nagradu staro najmanje tri godine. Ove godine dobitnik te nagrade je Ratko Odalović. 